Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. And I'm going to give you the latest update on what's going on with this tropical system and the severe weather because we still got a couple days of severe weather. Potential damage and winds, some hail, and maybe some chances of tornadoes. I will show you that's a small threat as well. I think it will be a hail and a damage and wind event the most. I'm going to show you what's the latest thing in the tropics. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year along with my weather forecasting. Make sure you click the bell and select all that way you do get the updates. Sorry, I didn't do an update yesterday, everybody. I had some bad technical problems over here. Matter of fact, some very rare technical problems I've never had had before and didn't even get fixed until this morning so i will see this afternoon for the update and it will continue every single day thank you to everyone that hits that like button and that share button to help others get some information remember we want to practice safety is the best thing so people know what is going on in their weather now the latest information shows still in five days it'll be right over here by the bahamas either going this direction towards the eastern side of florida or it'll travel further to the west and still going into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, what it's going to come to is whether we have a trough coming through. Now, this trough will pull this to the north. But if the trough passes by, it will pull it a little bit. And then it's going to travel to the west because the trough has done moved already to the east. The Euro takes it faster. The other models are trending it a little bit slower. So I'm going to show you all the latest information so you can see what is going on with this potential tropical storm hurricane that is forming over here by Florida or the east coast. So starting off with the tropics, you can see how it's all getting bunched up to this region now, and it can either be on the north side of this cone or the southern side, showing that this system will start strengthening as it goes further along the west. Now remember, if it don't get hit with that trough, it will be down here on the southern side. This is deep ocean heat content as well. If it does get pulled with that trough, it'll get pulled in this direction. We get more strength in the eastern Pacific as well, even showing chance for 30% in the next 48 hours, 80% in the next seven days on some of these waves, 40% on this other one, showing potentially a small threat, maybe a tropical storm could be winding down going towards Hawaii. Now at 10 days, we're literally here with these waves. That's why I got it on GFS so we can see past 10 days, potentially showing it could be a weak tropical storm that winds down towards Hawaii. And that second one so far is going to the northern side. That's just the latest information. It's still way down the road. Now, the latest information, you can see the storm system right here, according to the Euro, in five days, still five days away from this shot. And you can see that trough coming in. Now, you look, when you look at the other weather models, you can see the same thing on the Canadian. But the storm system is a little bit further towards Cuba a little bit. It depends which way this surface low forms up as it's going through this landfall. Is it going to get a surface on the northern side or is it going to get a surface low on the southern side? You can also see with GFS showing that will be right in the same region that the Canadian is also showing and also showing maybe a little piece could break off. Now GFS has been trending that this trough right here will pull that to the north a little bit but then it's going to be too far. Now the trough is already passing by and the system is already moving further into the Gulf of Mexico on this run. Don't take much with it, but it still heads north and intensifies at the last moment there. Something very weak. But then you see there's maybe a little stall effect. If you remember that we was seeing a stall potentially in the past. And showing that that second piece, you can see them both, two pieces still. Showing that piece could go where the euro is showing and showing that piece could go right into the Gulf of Mexico. Still showing two pieces. And showing we have another tropical wave that's coming after that one. And the euro is seeing that one a little further to the west now when you go by the euro you can see the latest information pulls it very strong with that trough right here pulls it right along the coast of florida this has gone a little further west just like i was saying in yesterday's video but if you look with the canadian you can see that it pulls it but now the trough is already passed and it goes west you get a little bit of a strengthening high pressure pushing this to the west while this trough is passed and it goes further into the western gulf then gets pulled around by that trough and that high pressure. Still showing it will strengthen in that direction. So you can see that it has changed according to the Canadian. And you see that stall effect right there by the Carolinas as well. But you can see it has changed according to the Canadian and the Euro. The Canadian has gone a little bit further to the east. So it's the GFS. And the Euro has gone a little bit further towards the west. So we're still seeing that chance for this to go in this direction and then go like that.
You can see according to the Euro, it takes that further track to north. Getting pulled by that trough gets a little bit closer towards the coast still. East side and north side loaded. And it goes right out through the northeast and keeps strengthening up to a hurricane still showing that as well. And that just gets a little bit more to the west, a little bit closer. This will buzzsaw all along the coast and potentially strengthen as it goes up the coast. Now remember, that's what the Euro has seen. And the Euro has seen this path a long time ago when all the other weather models did not agree with the Euro. European is pretty dead scent that this is going to go right up the coast. But you can see right here with the icon model that showed barrel, just like the Euro's a lone wolf, so was an icon on barrel. Showing that the high pressure will be weakening and retracting back, but a wave could already be further to the west before that happens. Still, this could just be a group of disorganized thunderstorms run out of time because of all this landfall. Go towards Florida, hit Florida as something like a tropical depression, a group of disorganized thunderstorms, something very weak, and it would remain weak because of all the land, land interaction on the lower 48 as well. So it could just be a rain event. Still too far to know for sure. And you can see in the spaghetti o models in five days with the European showing all that could probably form up in this region and start strengthening up as it goes around the high pressure getting pulled by that trough. Then literally something could form up into the Gulf a little bit later and that's when we get that next wave coming through and it starts growing in confidence of something forming up into the Gulf of Mexico as we go towards the middle of August. And the best news yet, look at the control member this morning with the Ural, showing if that was a play out, along with all the dry air getting involved and some shear, that it would have remained a very weak wave. And you can see the shot here going right up the coast, very weak, just bringing some rainfall, strengthening up as it leaves though. And the Ensemble tracks is still taking it with the European where it's strengthening up even more confidence as it goes by the Bahamas. And it will go right around that curve, still not affecting anyone, not even Bermuda. Showing that all this dry air will be around this system and actually will get into the core as it goes past the Bahamas. And look how it gets into it again when it goes by the Carolinas. And that dry air going all the way to the core with the precipitation right off of the center. You can see that. You have all the dry air going right to the core of the system, and all precipitation is getting pulled to the southern side. So that system would not be able to strengthen according to that until it gets away from it. And look how dry air stays in it as it pushes it away also, showing this system isn't going to be anything on the latest run with the Euro. And the Canadian still shows it where it'll go further to the west because it didn't meet up with that trough good enough and still will start strengthening up right there in the Gulf of Mexico to a tropical storm but run out of time and stay strong all along the coast and then get that stall effect going on. But the information is still all over the place. The European is seeing this confidently going around the coast. And this right here with your tropical cyclone strike probability has taken more confidence of this going even further into Florida. You see that? It's taking more confidence now going further into Florida right along the Gulf Coast. Now just to show you some crazy accuracy, when you look at the old farmer's almanac, when you go to look for August for Florida, look at this. From the 20s in August, they're expecting a hurricane threat to the north side of the state. And as you check along the southeast, along the Carolinas, they're expecting that to be a hurricane threat for the east coast. Showing the next wave, the one that the Euro is showing potentially can go into the Gulf of Mexico and intensify. And it's showing major hurricanes so far as it will change. That is the same system they're showing that will go by the east coast in northern Florida as a hurricane threat. So, so far we have with the European, all the heavy rainfall will start building up for northern Bahamas and go right around the coast and really don't affect no one. Canadian takes it further in where you get a dramatic amount of heavy rainfall across northern Florida, southern Georgia, and the Carolinas. And GFS takes it where I don't have enough time to strengthen up. And it's just a group of disorganized thunderstorms bringing a lot more rainfall. But you can see how it brings that impact 
right towards the same area as the Canadian. Now for today, you can see there's a couple areas of slight risk and they have changed the location of chances for tornadoes. They did have this whole region. Now they cut it off and it's only the southern region. Now they got a region on the north central. So, so far, here's your cities and states at risk for a potential tornado threat for today. I'm showing it's going to be a damage and wind event. Then it's going to be a small small window of a tornado threat and then up here for the northern northern central this is going to be a later tonight a small chance for a tornado threat we also have the wind threat for today in both regions even still strong winds up here for the north central i'm showing that could spread out towards iowa and northern missouri as well for tomorrow so far here's your cities and states at risk for the damage and wind threat for today also your hail threat for today almost in the same regions i can see this will ramp up also over here towards tennessee kentucky valley illinois indiana for tomorrow and chances for large hail in the black area so so far here's your cities and states at risk for the chances for the hail threat for today national weather service has scattered strong severe storms are possible across parts of the central and northern plains this afternoon and evening and also across parts of the midwest and ohio valley through the day so for this morning you have them storms going through illinois and you see how that bows out with some winds behind it also but it dissipates by the time you go towards noon and lunchtime then you start getting some isolated in nature then you start getting some storms for michigan also the up you get some for florida for the southeast a little bit for the mid-atlantic it's a little bit isolated in nature nothing super serious about these just regular thunderstorms popping up and you're getting some rainstorms coming through the northwest through washington and some for the north central north central is going to be later tonight but once you go around seven and eight o'clock then it's really going to kick off so once you get around seven or eight then you got storm cells popping up for the Dakotas, also a little bit from northern Nebraska. But you get this group of storms that pops up for Indiana, potentially bringing some damaging winds with it. You see that? Some straight line winds as you go through the evening. Also bringing some strong winds with these cells through the night. Also chances for tornadoes to come out of this. Yeah, you can get potential supercells to come out of those through the Dakotas. Then you go through the early morning hours and it turns into some strong little storms that pass through western Iowa. Could bring some winds as well. But those storms that came through Indiana, look how you're going later tonight, early in the morning. It bows out, bringing the chances for the damage and winds. Then as you go through for tomorrow morning, you get the storms that's going through today. Heads to the northeast for tomorrow. It's going to be a little isolated in nature for y'all as well. Nothing super huge. Just bring some thunderstorms on by. But you can see for tomorrow night, look how sporadic it is. You might get a cell or two passing through the north central just for a moment. Maybe a little bit through the Dakotas just for a moment and maybe something through illinois tennessee and kentucky showing chances for damage and winds with those cells and you can see the chances for the damage of winds so as you go all the way to six and seven even eight o'clock tonight the winds that passed through earlier today bring y'all some 40 maybe a little bit of 50 every now and then isolated nature wind gusts but these cells over here for the dakotas and northern nebraska starts picking up to the 50 60 even get a little 70 or higher on some of those cells as it goes by early in the morning and weakens down as it goes to minnesota it goes from 50 down to 40 and you can see overnight you get some strong storms bringing strong winds across iowa as well that's overnight early in the morning then for tomorrow those storm cells come right back again bringing strong winds for the dakotas and northern nebraska and the cells that's going through iowa spark up over here for illinois now that right there is showing chances for 80 and maybe more miles per hour wind gusts but we're definitely seeing chances for 60 and maybe 70 come out of that. And in the same locations, you can see the hail. Just bringing chances for hail to come with those storms as you go through for tonight all the way to the early morning hours. Then for tomorrow, it comes right back again for the Dakotas, Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana, some of Kentucky. The same region over and over. So you can see for tomorrow, your chances for tornadoes. They have another big 2% right here for the whole region, but I'm not showing it is the whole region. I'm showing it just be a couple of cells that could spark up something. I think it's a low confidence. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the chance for tornadoes. And no, I am not playing this down because I am in there for Milwaukee on both days. And I don't think there's an issue. Also, your wind threat for tomorrow. You can see it's in the same region and your hail is going to be less for tomorrow. So, so far, here's your cities and states at risk for the chance for the damage and winds for tomorrow. And I'm showing we could get ramped up a little bit more right here in this 15%. 
National Weather Service has scattered strong severe storms will be possible across a broad region from the northern plains to the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Carolinas. A more concentrated severe wind threat is possible across portions of the Corn Belt. And then as you go into Wednesday, they have a 5% and you got one area with a 15% chance for some hail, maybe a little bit of winds. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for that. But once again, when you look at Colorado State University for today, you see how the tornado threat has changed dramatically. With National Weather Service even added a section, cut this section in half. You see what Colorado State is showing, very small. Maybe a cell here or there, nothing big to worry about. And as you look for tomorrow, you see they got that big, huge area showing. And all they have is a small area, according to Colorado State University. They even have a small chance over here for Idaho and western Montana. Now, when you look at the latest run, you can see as you get them storms later on for tonight, going across Indiana, and this is going across Tennessee, Kentucky Valley as well, as that pulls to the south. You can see the damage and winds last all the way till tomorrow morning, going all the way into Tennessee right there and going all the way to northern Georgia and northern Alabama as it weakens down. Then as you go for tomorrow, look how we just get this train of storms that just gets pulled around. Look how those get pulled around all the way to 1 o'clock in the morning for the next day. So I will keep you updated. I'm more concerned with these storm cells that's training into this direction more than the damage and wind event that you see that will pass through for tonight. So you do got to watch out for this. This will cause power outages as well. Showing a little bit stronger, but it will dissipate in the morning as it goes by the south. But for tomorrow, this right here is a little more concerning with us getting spun around. Thank you for your time, everybody. I will be there this afternoon for you to give you the latest update. What's going on with the tropics and if these storms do change as well, intensity or a weaken down either way, I will update you on that as well. I appreciate every single one of y'all and hope you'll have a very great day today. Now, before you go today, Psalm 105, 1 through 4. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you this afternoon. These storms look like they're starting to strengthen just a little bit more. I think it's going to be more of a damage and wind event than expected. So I will probably update that this afternoon as well if I see some different information. I appreciate everybody. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I will see you this afternoon.